So in, in 20 seconds or less, what are the health concerns with wireless radiation? What, what are you talking about could happen to you if you're exposed to it? Well, there's uh, brain cancer, breast cancer when you have the phone near your body. Uh, genetic damages, impacts to sperm have been found, impacts to fertility, ch uh, biochemical changes in your body that can make you less resilient to dealing with other, other problems. So you have fertility, memory damage, uh, prenatal impacts, so impacts to developmentally to children. There's been research that's found, for example, synergistic effects, meaning you might have... Um, in one study, they looked at uh, lead levels, kids who'd been exposed to lead and also had higher cell phone exposure and found that they had more symptoms, ADHD symptomology. Um, and in fact, there's quite a growing literature on these, the, the mix, you know, when you kind of like when you mix drugs, well, you mix toxic exposures with electromagnetic fields. There's been research showing impacts to the blood brain barrier, which would then allow more of that toxic exposure or the chemicals or the whatever the metals and so forth to circulate in your brain, where of course it can do more damage. So that impacts to the brain is, uh, well, it certainly is one of my, um, that's what got me interested in this issue because I don't, you know, you can't take it back. You okay. can't say, Oh, you know, you it is what it is. So if in 10 years or however many years the US government decides that they're going to label phones and say don't put them against your head and when you carry the baby in the sling, don't put it up against the baby, which they should be saying, you won't be able to go back in time and fix and take back that time. Is one thing in the human studies, the more time, it's cumulative, right? The time matters. So that's why we educate on reducing reducing that time of exposure. You'll never okay. be able to take it back. Look, I had the baby, I had my baby in a sling and I had that phone right on the baby. Okay. So um, not as much as I see now because we didn't use the phone that much 21 years ago. But um, so. Okay. So let me ask you, a bunch of things to just give me a quick answer on. I want to ask you about eight different things and just tell me um, which is the most concerning, the least concerning. So <clears throat> someone has a cell phone. For starters, the cell phone's off. So can I start out by saying when a cell phone is turned off, can we call it harmless? It's, no, it's off. Is that harmless at that point? If the phone is off, it's not transmitting, except I hate to say this, but some of the newer phones are on when they're off. And I never thought I, I mean, they're literally on when they're off. So the new, the newest iPhone I found is on when it's off. And that is why we recommend contacting the companies too. And that's something that we're working on. So yeah, turn it off. Um, we don't, rec we recommend getting a, a cell phone that stays off when it's off. How do we know if it's off? If it's when Well, it's off? the ones that when even they'll tell you, even though it's off, you can still find it. It has a little finder because oh. it's actually, um, it's not as much, look, the phone is not on as much as when the power's on. This is, I think it's the, I, I have to find which iPhone, it's like the newest iPhone. Um, but like my phone uh, is an 11 and it's, off when it's off. And I know because I use the meter. So turn it off. Turn the air, turn it on airplane mode, turn it on Bluetooth to turn off the antennas. And I can use cell phone on a um Ethernet, like in my house. I can't see if you can see it there, but you can connect it with okay. the wire. So the first thing is when it's off, ideally you want a phone that's set that's really off. And if you have a meter, it would show that whether it's on or not. Yes. Okay. So the it's first the thing is brand new, newest Apple phones. Okay. So the first thing is a phone that's off, unless it's one of the newest ones is off. Now, yes. you turn the phone on, on, and <clears throat> you, um, and you're saying, the first thing you're saying is if you're making a phone call and put it right up to your head, 
and sit on the phone for an hour right to your head that's the worst of everything is that right that yeah you don't want to do that that's the okay now instead of putting it to your head one step better with saying is speakerphone is that a little bit better yes use it on speakerphone okay and so put it on the the table if you can yes so it's, it's, yes so not even on touching your body is even better now you, the next question is um if you instead of calling and using the speaker phone you um just text with it so so first calling is going to be the worst then speaker phone is next now how about if i'm just texting is that much better than calling texting is much better than uh, voice calls or video calls so something that we and i know i have i have two well they're not even necessarily teenagers anymore but everyone's doing this facetiming all the time it is not if it's not necessary don't do it because the video uses a much higher amount of uh of not just energy but it's moving a lot more through the air so the thing to remember is the radiation exposure is from the information that's moving it's a wireless communication signal so when you have video moving or even sound that's much more than just text which is just a few words so okay. texting is better not texting with pictures just not pictures is worse than just words like i am at the airport you know like you know here i am i'm at you know number 13 just keep it simple that's it all this texting that's happening is is an issue um but you know there is a lot of mo communications you know one thing i did was like hmm what's really important it was kind of like a journey like some people make a journey with food or they make a journey with toxic chemicals and kind of getting rid of you know cleaning the water that they're drinking most of the time or not using certain lotions and getting rid of fragrance and all of that it's the same thing it's like getting educated one step at a time uh and it really makes a difference okay so yeah. texting words is better than texting with pictures and texting with pictures is better than an actual voice or or, or, or where you can see the person like FaceTime. FaceTime, right. Face better than right. FaceTime. Better to just text. Okay. Now, yeah. um, next question is <clears throat> you heard this lecture, you're following your instructions, but your husband or wife didn't hear the lecture. So they're <laughs> next to you on the couch, two feet away. Um, how much distance protects you? Is every foot make a big difference? Is 10 feet away enough? Is 50 feet away? So if the, someone else is using their cell phone, how many feet away do you have to be where you're not getting exposure that concerns you? That, I, what I would say is distance is your friend, but I can't give you an exact number. It's, it's a little bit more complicated than that, but it really is true that every foot makes a difference. So in fact, every inch makes a difference. Every millimeter makes a difference. Uh, you want to get as much of a distance as possible, but it's that close range exposure is going to really expose parts of your body. Um, you know, there are some things we can control. I, the way I approach this is I control what I can control and try to educate people around me that I love so that they can take steps to reduce exposure. And also this setup that I was showing you, the reason I was um, showing it is that if you're in your home, you can connect your cell phone to, I know it looks kind of funny, but or it's not cancer, that's my theory, is you can connect this and you can actually do everything on your cell phone so that you would want to do, except for, unfortunately, make a call through the usual way. You can make it through um, WhatsApp, for example, but you can connect your phone to a wire when you're in your home. Okay. Now, I know that's like the last step. That's not the first step. It's sort of like that's deeper in, but. Okay, so someone now is, if someone is, uh, you're saying the further away they are, the better if they're yes. on the phone. Is there a point though where you're being neurotic? Like if someone's 40 feet away, am I getting oh. significant exposure or at that point, should I just relax? I No, 40 feet is pretty far. So, um, however, a cell tower 
in front of your bedroom window at 40 feet is a different story. Got it. Now, let's assume that we keep away from these phones, but now the phone is, um, a phone call is over, and now the phone is just on. How far away do you want to be from an on phone um, in your house? Is three feet away enough, 10 feet away, 20? You know, in other words, assume you're in the bedroom at night. How many feet away do you want that phone to be from you? Does it have to be 20 feet away? Does it have to be 50? Does it have to be in a different floor? Does it have to be off? You know, it's 10 hours a night. What do you do? Best case scenario is you turn your phone off. That's the the best thing to do. And if you have it, there is the issue of emergencies. So hopefully keep your phone if you have one, or I have a, um, a phone with a cord in the bedroom that goes through the the internet service. So it's like an internet phone that I have in the house. I know not everyone has that. Some people only have cell phones, right? Um, but I would just have it off uh, or, you know, put it across as far away as you can. Um, that's what I would recommend. Every room is different, right? So. Okay. What about the bedroom? You're going to sleep. Don't at night. sleep on the phone. Soon you're going to sleep at night for the next 30 years and you're going to be in your bedroom every night for nine hours. And your partner says, um, I got to be able to reach the kids and my parents. Mm -hmm. So I have to have a phone on and you say, okay, let's keep it far away. How far away is it have to be? So a phone that's not being used, but it's on really doesn't significantly concern you is 20 feet away enough to just say every night for the rest of my life, there's going to be a foot, a, a cell phone 20 feet away? Or are you saying, no, that's like, you know, burning a cigarette 20 feet away, it eventually gets to you? Mm. You know, this is, so there are, <laughs> I see where you're going. Um, not all bedrooms are 20 feet. So probably they're about 10 feet or, or less. I think the way this works in real life, though, is that you just want to, you sort of have to do the best you can. So, you know, if you need the phone to be on, put it, put, don't, not only put it far away, but if you can put it, if there's a window or a window sill, I like to put, when I need to use the phone, be near the window because you don't, that way the signal is clearer for the phone and it doesn't radiate as much. Um, so, you know, once it's, once it's a few feet away, there's going to be much less exposure, but there still is some exposure. And I know that because I have a meter. So uh, now my daughter is coming. Sophia, I'm on, I'm on the phone. So, and it's hard being, having me as mom. Um, so, um, so I would, you know, I, I, here's the other thing is phones are all different as to what they emit, depending on other things that might be in your home. So if you're in a basement situation where there's not a lot of service, your phone actually can emit much more trying to reach out. Um, so that is why we really recommend getting a phone that is connected with a cord. Got it. Okay. I, now, I really do recommend that. Right. Now, your children um, are off to school, they're off to college, they're off to whatever. And every single person that they know, 100% has a cell phone and they're on. Now, what do you tell them to do? Do they put it in their pocketbook? Do they put it in their pocket? Do they hold it? You know, what in the, what do you do? I mean, we're, it's 2023. I'd like to tell them not to use it. They might say that's not realistic. I have to be textable. I have to be reachable. So the choices seem to be your hand, your pocket, your pocketbook, or not at all. What do you do? It, to, to not sleep with it next to your head. To You mean when you're walking on campus? I mean, to for not every, have it, I mean, to, from... 8 a.m. until midnight, what does every kid in this country, what does anyone do who, you know, other than really motivated people, what are you telling, what do you tell your children about this, you know, about what they should do? I'm going to tell you, there's a two-part answer to this. One part is what I'm going to tell you, you can tell your kids. And the second part is that this is why the companies and the federal government needs to act on this immediately because they can fix this because there is only so much that we can do, right? We can educate them. We can say, don't put it in your bra. Don't put the phone to your head. You know, put it in your backpack instead of on your body, in your pocket against your reproductive parts. We can tell them that. We can 
um, tell them not to sleep with their phone or have all these devices on them. But the reality is we have to get our lawmakers and our agencies to do what they need to do and or as consumers tell companies what we want. I mean, this is, um, you know, I, I hear you. 